What's going on everyone? It's Phil from Earth Nails and Tails and today I want to show you how to create your very own simple DIY worm composting system that you can use indoors or out. I've been worm composting for years and I've really found the results out in my garden to be amazing. And this year I really wanted to take the next step and create an easy DIY worm composting system that I could use inside during the winter. Since the worms really slow down once those cooler months come around, I'm not able to recycle as much as my food scraps and turn it into the compost that I need in order to fertilize my garden. So what I decided to do was build this really simple solution. That way I could recycle my food scraps indoors and keep my worms happy all winter long. I've seen a few different types of worm composting systems and a lot of them are made out of wood, but I wanted to create a system that was really simple to create and easy to maintain and clean and that's why I decided to use these white food grade buckets. Now it's really important to use the food grade buckets because you don't want any additional chemicals, unnecessary chemicals really leaching into your compost but also could affect the worms. So I think really using food grade buckets is really important for this process and that's what I would recommend for you to use as well. You could go ahead online and find some other systems that utilize wood if you want something that looks a little different, but I really feel like these buckets really do the job well. Before we get into more on how I created the composting system itself, I wanted to get into the requirements of the worms. So what type of worms do I need and what type of environment they need to live in in order to really start to break things down and create that compost that we're looking for. So let's talk about the type of worms that you need for your composting system. And no, you can't just go out in your backyard, pick up some worms, throw them in your worm bin, and expect them to create worm compost. There are literally hundreds of different species of worms. And for the worm composting system, you want to use worm composting or composting worms, which are commonly referred to as red wrigglers. So if we come over here and look inside this worm bin, you'll notice that you don't see any of the worms. That's because they're hiding underneath, inside all of this compost and food scraps that we have in here, and that's where they like to live. Not all worms like to live in compost or deep underneath the soil. So you have to be very specific about the type of worms you use. And this is not a sponsored post. I've been getting all of my worms from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm and I've gotten worms for this system here, and I've gotten worms for my sub pod, which I also have outdoors, and I've had great success with that company. But look for something that's closer to your area. I've even seen people able to get them at Walmart, but red wrigglers is what you want because they have an amazing ability to be able to eat their weight in food scraps every single day. And that's really gonna allow you to create a lot of compost quickly, but also handle the amount of food waste that you're putting into this compost bin, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Now, what type of environment do they need? You saw that they like to live in this bucket in here, deep in the soil. And this, I'll tell you right now, this isn't actually soil. I started this off with coconut coir. It's a nice fluffy material, but it can also maintain moisture, which is very important. Your worms breathe through their skin. They understand how much moisture is in an area or in their environment. It can't be too dry, it can't be too wet. And just like our soil out in our garden, we want it to be the consistency of a wrung out sponge. So if I pick up some of this coconut coir and I squeeze it and I see water come out, there's too much moisture. Luckily, you could just squeeze it out and then it'll probably be good enough. But using coconut coir as a base for your worm composting bin, at least for your worms to get started, is a really excellent choice because it has a neutral pH and it has a great ability to absorb moisture and keep your worms in the environment that they like. Temperature is also extremely important. The reason why I created this worm composting bin is to compost indoors during the winter. As I mentioned earlier, it's cold outside. Those worms are really going to slow down. Like us, they want to be at a temperature around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's where they're going to work their best. Anywhere in a range from 65 to 75, they would probably work really well. But as it gets warm, they slow down. And as it gets cold, they slow down. So you really want to find that nice temperature range. So when you see some worm composting systems that you have outdoors, they're typically in the ground. 
That's because people think the worms will have the ability to travel in and out of that composting system, but it's really in to maintain the temperature of the system overall. When you dig the composting system into the ground or you put it in the ground, that ground temperature is going to stay relatively steady throughout the course of the year, regardless of the season. So it really helps to maintain the temperature of the worm composting bin and allows them to keep working regardless of the season. But if you have an above ground system like this, maintaining the temperature is really important. And it just so turns out that most people's homes are around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So you could do this comfortably all year long inside your home. So how many red regular composting worms do you need for your five gallon bucket system? Well, for this one, I added about 500 worms and worms have a great ability in order to regulate the population inside the worm bin. So if they sense that there is a large population, they're gonna slow down on their egg production. Not as many babies are gonna be born. And as the older ones die off, they'll start to produce again. So you don't have to worry about really having too many worms, they'll kind of self-regulate, but you wanna make sure that you have enough off the start in order to see how much these worms can actually eat in their long run. So when you first get your worms, you're going to want to acclimate them before you give them any type of food scraps. So again, inside of my worm composting bin here, I've got my five gallon bucket. And how I started the system before I even put the worms in, I started with coconut coir as we previously discussed. But you wanna fill up this bucket at least one third of the way with coconut coir. And it's gotta be nice and moist. So you've probably seen on the internet at some point that someone pouring water on a coconut coir and watching it expand, you want it to do exactly that and wring out any of that extra moisture before you put your worms in because you want it to be ready for your worms when they arrive. If you order them online, they're probably gonna be dried out. They're gonna be looking for that moisture. So you wanna have this system ready for them as soon as they arrive and then put them right in the bin. And then for the first two weeks, you're not going to want to give them any food scraps. They'll be able to eat this coconut coir just fine. This is still rotting organic matter. They're still gonna be able to eat this and create worm castings. After they get settled, after they're two weeks in this new bin, that's when you can start adding food scraps. And you can see this piece of, I don't even know what this is anymore. Maybe it was like a piece of lettuce or something. You could see how it's all chewed up and starting to break down. I'm gonna just take that. I'm gonna move some of this coconut coir out of the way. I'm gonna stick that in the middle and you want to make sure it's covered because one of the most common questions that we get is does this smell? And the way you can prevent it from smelling is by moving back some of that coconut coir and putting the materials, burying the materials underneath the surface and it's gonna keep it covered and then the worms will also be able to access to it. Because the red wrigglers, they're not gonna be crawling around on the surface here. They're gonna be inside of that coconut coir waiting for the food and then they will find that food, believe me. They're gonna be hungry, they're gonna to wanna to eat that food. So the first time you're gonna put a very small amount of food in, maybe like a small handful of food, you're gonna put your food scraps in there and then you're gonna see how long it takes for your worms to eat that food. Do not add any more food until it's completely eaten by the worms because they know fresh food, just like us. We want to eat fresh food. We would prefer to eat fresh food than the leftovers that we have in our refrigerator. So you want to make sure that they eat all of their food before you add any more. And then you'll also have a gauge. Oh, if I add a handful of food, I put it in there, it takes them two days to eat it. Then you know you can add a handful of food every two days. And eventually that population is gonna to start to build and you can add a little bit more. And then you really start to figure out how much food scraps you can add at any given time. Another great question is what can we feed our worms? And I've got this table pulled up here for you, but things that you really want to make sure your worms are getting are leafy greens, mostly kitchen vegetable scraps and a little bit of fruit and some carbon materials. So what you want to stay away from is dairy products, meats, oils, pretty much everything else can go inside of your worm farm. Now, as this coconut coir starts to get eaten away, I can already see that this coconut coir is being turned into worm castings. It's really hard to tell, but your worm castings are gonna have almost like a sand-like structure, and they're gonna be very, very dark little balls. And I'm already starting to see that develop in here, which is awesome, which means they're working. But over time, they're gonna eat this coconut coir. So what I would recommend that you do 
is every time you add your food scraps, add a little bit of brown material, which would be cart shredded cardboard, paper, or even leaves will work amazing in this composting system. What that's going to do is balance the nitrogen and the carbon, and that's also going to help keep down the smell as well as the moisture. Now, since we're on the moisture, we're gonna get into the construction of this bin overall, the three bin system. Now that we understand the requirements of our worms and how to maintain them, let's talk about how we actually created the system itself. And I've got two bins right here. This is a three bin system. So this, this bin, this bottom bin, is a completely solid white food grade bucket. And the whole purpose of this bin is in order to catch any liquid drainage. And you can see that there's some worms in here. I'm gonna have to take these worms out and put them back into the composting bucket because they probably fell out through the holes that I have in this bucket right here. Now you'll notice on the bottom, I've got some pretty large holes. And honestly, I don't really have a recommendation on how large these holes need to be. They need to be large enough for the liquid to be able to come out of this bucket as well as the worms to travel through. If you look at the size of these worms, like let's grab a worm right here. This is a juvenile worm, but they're really skinny, right? These worms are not huge. So even if you do like an eighth inch or a quarter inch hole on the bottom of this bucket, it's gonna be absolutely fine for them to be traveling in and out. So it's really important to have the holes on the bottom. As you can see, there's some water dripping out in order for it to drain into that bottom bucket. Now, you, as I said, you wanna minimize the amount of moisture. Having excess moisture in the bottom is not good. Some people will be like, oh, I can just use that liquid down there. That's worm tea. It is not worm tea, first off. It's not worm tea. You, do not wanna min you don't wanna have a lot of moisture in this bucket down here. Moisture in the bucket means you have too much moisture in the system, and you can see that some of the worms are down there probably because they're trying to escape this overly moist environment. So maintaining the right amount of moisture is very important. So I'm gonna to have to get rid of this moisture at the bottom, put the worms back in, and I think they'll be okay. I would not consider this worm casting tea or I would not use this as worm casting tea. Let's say you take some old lettuce that you had in the fridge or some old spinach, and you put it in your worm casting, or you put it in your worm composting bin. What if that lettuce or that spinach has E. coli? Now you have E. coli liquid drainage that's just sitting in the bottom of your worm casting bin that you may go apply on your vegetables. What if you apply it to your lettuce? Now you're spraying E. coli potentially onto your lettuce or your spinach. So I personally would not use this liquid drain drainage at all. I would dump it out somewhere that's not on top of your edible foods. Maybe give it to a rose bush or some sort of fruit tree, but do not dump it on your food, directly on your food. So that's my, that's my spiel on the moisture content inside the bin, but it really is so important. Now for this top bin, let's get back to this top bin. So you can see, yeah, you can even see that there's some worms around here. They're probably just trying to escape that little bit of extra moisture. So we're gonna take care of them and remove that. For this top bin, where the worms and all the food scraps and the coconut coir and all of your carbon materials that you're gonna put in, everything is basically in here. So we've got our drainage holes in the bottom, but we've also got some really tiny holes up top if you come in here to see these. These holes are really important. You can see them, I've drilled them all along here. You wanna have these really tiny holes in the top inch of your bin. And notice they're not on the lid either. Because if I decide to take this bin and put it outdoors, if I have holes on the lid, what happens when it rains? All of that liquid from the rain is gonna go inside of my worm composting bin and then I'm gonna have a highly, highly moist environment and the worms are gonna hate it. They're gonna wanna leave and then there goes your worm composting setup. So what you wanna do is on the top inch of your bin here, find the smallest drill bit that you have and go all the way around and make a bunch of tiny holes because that's going to help alleviate some of that moisture, allow the moisture to travel out, but also fresh air to travel through. And that's gonna prevent mold from forming inside of your worm composting bin. Now this bin has been set up, I think what, for a few months now, or at least a month and a half, something like that. And this is what it looks like. It pretty much looks the same way as we established it. No mold, no bugs, no gnats, nothing in here. That's the importance of having these holes and having them small. So the worms can't get out of here. There's no bugs that are gonna be able to get in. 
and you're going to be able to provide a natural airflow in and out of the worm bin. So I've got my bottom bin, I've got my second bin where all of my worms and my food scraps are, and then I've got my third bin. The second bin and the third bin are the exact same. Notice the holes on the bottom, they're a little bit easier to see since it's empty. I'm also gonna have holes on the top. I don't need my third bin yet, so I didn't make these holes, I didn't cut the holes yet, but there's gonna look the exact same thing it's gonna be the exact same thing as this second bucket here. Now I'm gonna put this bucket back just to show you all how this system actually works. So this second bin goes in, I'm adding food scraps, I'm adding my carbon, the worms are building up, the stuff is building up on the inside. As it builds up, what I'm going to do is take my third bin and put it on top. Now what I'm gonna do is establish this bin the exact same way I started my first bin, put in a little bit of coconut coir, just not as much this time, just a little bit, probably about a few inches worth, just to create a main base. And then what we'll do is start adding our food scraps in up here. What's going to happen is the worms are gonna eat all the food scraps in this first bin. They're gonna know that the fresh food is in this new bin and they're gonna migrate through those holes in the bottom here up into the new material where the new food is. And that's going to take some time, right? Worms move pretty slow. These ones are actually pretty efficient, but it's still gonna take some time. So allow some time for those worms to travel up into the new bin. So come on in here and you've probably noticed there is a tiny little gap here for where, when this bucket is sitting in. And honestly, this bucket's probably gonna be up higher like this once this second bucket's full. What I'm going to do is get another one of these lids and I'm gonna cut, basically cut this whole frame out here. So that way, this bin, this lid will sit on this second bin here and I'll be able to slide this bucket in so that, that way there won't be any gaps and the worms won't be able to physically come out of the bin. It'll basically force them to go into this new composting bin where they're gonna go ahead and produce more worm compost. After most of the worms have traveled into the new bin, you could take this bin out now i've got this bin that is solely full of worm castings and i'll be able to use this whole bin all the worm castings out in my garden i'll take this one out and i'll use this one as worm castings and i'll put this bin right back in and that replaces my second bin and the process starts all over again once i used all of these worm castings this now becomes my third bin or my makeup bin once this bin is full I'll put this empty bin in and the process starts all over again. So that's the beauty of this bucket system. It's affordable, it makes things simple, it's easy to clean, easy to use. This is why I decided to use these food grade buckets. And I forgot to mention, I didn't talk about the price. Each one of these buckets is about eight bucks and I think the lid was a couple dollars. So this whole system cost me about $25 to create. So I think it is a really excellent and affordable option for people to get into worm composting and creating their worm compost at home. All right, everyone. Well, that's gonna about sum it up for today's video. I hope this was really helpful. So many of you had questions on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and I really wanted to create this in order to clarify how this system works. And I really think it is so effective and powerful to create your own worm compost. And I'm telling you, once you see how amazing worm compost is in the garden, you're gonna wanna create your own worm compost as well. So I'm really curious to hear everyone's comments, see what you think, how you're gonna build the system, and let us know what you wanna see us create for a DIY project next. Again, my name is Phil from Earth Nails and Tails, and I'll see you in the next video.